Hey, what's up everybody? This is Gons with another video for you. This one's going to be a little bit shorter. It's just a brief thing that I noticed while, once again, watching the Disney Channel. I was watching a show called Kicking It on Disney XD. This is season four, episode number 14. It's called Seaford Hustle. And I noticed something interesting. Now, the basic storyline of this episode, or one of them anyway, is as follows. Quote, Milton fears his dreams of going to Oxbridge University are ruined until he meets Tom, the president of a powerful brotherhood that can help him. Interesting. The university that Milton is trying to get into, it's called Oxbridge. Of course, this is, uh, you know, a mix between Oxford and Cambridge. The use of the word or title Oxbridge is used to refer to those two universities. And so, you know, I think it's sort of a, you know, a way to express a super smart school, basically, is what they're trying to show. Now, the brotherhood that they displayed in this episode is none other than the Skull and Bones. Now, we know about the Skull and Bones. Of course, if you don't, then do a little study on it. Pretty interesting stuff there. Skull and Bones was founded in 1832. Um, there are researchers out there, such as Alexandria Robbins, among others, who suggest that Skull and Bones is a branch of the Illuminati and actually controls the CIA. There have been books written about the society, including one by economist Anthony C. Sutton. It's called America's Secret Establishment, an Introduction to the Order of Skull and Bones. And also a 2003 film by Chris Milligan called Fleshing Out Skull and Bones. The society Skull and Bones has actually been portrayed in several mainstream television programs. Cartoons like The Simpsons, Family Guy, American Dad and also an old episode of Batman, have all portrayed the Skull and Bones. Now, there are a lot of people who have come out of the Skull and Bones Society at Yale University and have become senators, political leaders, people in government, and the most popular family line that's probably come out of the Skull and Bones Society is the Bush family, Prescott Bush, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and also John Kerry. And if you guys recall... Uh, back in 2000, there was that whole thing where they interviewed John Kerry. Hey, you guys are both from Skull and Bones, you and George W. Bush. And Kerry had this uh, interesting comment to make. In Age of Deceit, Fallen Angels, and the New World Order, I have a clip from a news source that shows somebody sneaking into a Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. And what's interesting is that they show somebody being initiated and being yelled, kiss the skull. Okay, so this is like a real society, real dark stuff. So here's the first question as it relates to the show, kicking it. If they used a fictitious name for the university, why didn't they use a fictitious name for the secret society? What do you guys think? You can leave your comments and thoughts on why you think that is in the comment section below, but the other thing is that in the show, here's the situation. Milton is trying to get into Oxford, and he goes to a Skull and Bones party. He runs into a guy named Tom Buchanan. Tom Buchanan is the leader of the Skull and Bones Society in this episode. Now, again, if you've read The Great Gatsby, you'd recognize the name Tom Buchanan. And so my thought is that the writers were kind of giving an homage to The Great Gatsby, you know, high-level society. He was also Skull and Bones in the story, as some would suggest, and he was reckless and careless and all this stuff. And that's similar to what we see in this episode. But here's the second question I have about this episode. Check this out. So let me set this up for you. Basically, in the story, there's a lightsaber that's on display in front of the Kicking It dojo, the new dojo that they have. And Tom Buchanan decides to steal the lightsaber. And he tells Milton to distract the security guard so that he can take a picture with it. Well, in fact, he actually stole it. Well, this is the scene where Milton is confronting Tom Buchanan about the situation. And I'm going to pause it right where I think this whole thing is interesting. <laughs> you! You stole the lightsaber! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nobody addresses our president without first greeting him with the secret handshake. <laughs> little homage to the secret handshake, a little you, joke. You! stole the lightsaber! You used me! No, you helped me! That's what brothers do. Every president of Skull and Bones has to steal a valuable trophy for the legacy room in this house. The legacy room? It's a hidden chamber that can Okay. Before we get into what he's saying there, why does Tom Buchanan sit in front of the Viking horns, which earlier in the episode, this other guy here 
is running around drunk wearing the uh, Viking helmet. But I don't think there's any accidents, guys. Why would they portray Tom Buchanan, the leader of the Skull and Bones, in front of a Viking helmet with horns? I mean, the camera people had to have known this, right? So what are they trying to say here? Are they trying to tell us something about the Skull and Bones? So let me back it up a little bit, and then let's talk about what he says here. Every present the Skull and Bones has to steal a valuable trophy for the legacy room in this house. The legacy room? It's a hidden chamber that contains awesome one-of-a-kind collectibles. It's also a cool place to go if you need to do something in private. Y you know, like cry, rip one, crochet. JP! <laughs> okay, so it's talking about a secret chamber where stolen treasures exist. So I don't know about you guys, but if, let's say if, a secret society like the Skull and Bones which some suggest is the American branch of the Illuminati has something to do with the CIA, then we know that they have artifacts and things that are probably stolen from archaeological digs. They're probably involved in the Smithsonian cover-up, and perhaps Disney is trying to tell us some of these things. Now, in the episode, there's justice here. Tom Buchanan gets caught with all of the stolen goods, and you know he gets thrown out of school and all this stuff at the end. So there's a nice end-of-the-story type deal. But it goes into a deeper issue of mind control. And I want to read for you a document called The Satanic Illuminati Bloodlines Studying the Elite Families of Global Power. And uh, it goes through a whole bunch of stuff. I'll link it in the description section. But there's a, a paragraph I want to read for you. And it comes right after an extensive look at Fantasia and all of the occult symbolism that is used. Actually, not just occult, but satanic symbolism that's used when they portray Mickey Mouse as a sorcerer. Okay, so let me read this for you just to give food for thought. Quote, You've now finished reading a never-before-heard, unprecedented warning about the dark reality of the Disney's Magic Kingdom and how it fits in with mind control. Most Americans, when surveyed, say they believe in God. Most go to church, and many believe they are born again. Because of the Illuminati's deception campaign over several generations, the American public and the world in general has been led to believe that Disney was good and that Walt Disney was a good man. Because of his image, people suspended judgment about Disney and Disney movies. They entrusted their children to him. People had been manipulated into a frame of mind of predisposition that whatever comes out of Disney is good. They entrusted their children to take in what Disney fed their children's little minds week after week. The public's predisposition of trust was used to introduce Illuminati beliefs and their political agenda, and to carry out a vast program of trauma-based mind control on hundreds of thousands of tiny little children, whose minds and souls were stolen from them. Because many of the child slaves who are programmed with Disney themes are programmed with roles in bringing in the Antichrist, Walt Disney and his family have played a major role for the Antichrist. And now you can see how accurate the word of God is when it says, what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. So there you go. Some of these researchers have come to similar conclusions, and I think this is another example. Now, there's another element that I won't get too deep into in this video.